women. What can you say? Who made him? God must have been a fucking genius. How very gallant of you to say so. No, you don't understand. You see, I'm engaged to someone. And you blame me? No, it was unfair to you, too. You're so very... fascinating. I think it was that, the storm and our nearness, that made me lose my senses. Well, I've got them back this morning, and I'm asking you to forgive me. And for what I'm saying now, if I hurt you... Hurt me? <laughs> you delight me. You have the most amazing lack of humor of anyone I've ever known. <laughs> oh, I should laugh at you, should I? But I can't help it. You were so awkward that I almost laughed in your face at first, and then it made me quite sick to think that anyone could be stupid enough to be taken in by a lot of old tricks. I thought you might at least be amusing, but you turned out to be dull and stupid and so afraid. Well, you needn't be. I won't hurt your Sunday school romance or your oh-so-nice career. Hurt me? <laughs> Get out of here before you give me hysterics! <laughs> Have you ever buried your nose in a mountain of curls? Just wanted to go to sleep forever. Or lips. And when they touched yours were like that first swallow of wine after you just crossed the desert. What are you doing? I'm checking the passenger list. When a man has and valid after his name, He's definitely worthwhile. I'm simply trying to find a suitable gentleman escort for you. Well, don't bother. I've just provided myself with about 20. Dorothy, did you ever hear of a rich Paul Walter? Maybe not, but who cares? I like a man who can run faster than I can. I hate to think where you'll wind up. You're wasting all your time on unrefined persons without any money. Honey, did it ever occur to you that some people just don't care about money? Please, don't be silly. We're talking serious. You don't want to end up with a loveless marriage, do you? I thought you said you were broke. Don't you get the idea I'm doing this just to help you? I need money, too. You're good. You're awful good. I'd walk home if it wasn't for all that water. Why don't you take this bottle and go to bed? Who was the girl, Steve? Who was what girl? The one who left you with such a high opinion of women. She must have been quite a gal. You think I lied to you about this, don't you? Well, it just happens there's 30 odd dollars here. Just enough to be able to say no if I feel like it. You know, Steve, you're not very hard to figure. This belongs to me and so do my lips. I don't see any difference. Oh, I do. Okay. You know you don't have to act with me, Steve. You don't have to say anything, and you don't have to do anything. Not a thing. Oh, maybe just whistle. You know how to whistle, don't you, Steve? You just put your lips together and blow. Tits. Whoa. Big ones, little ones. Nipples staring right out at you. Like secret searchlights. Hmm. Legs. I don't care if they're Greek columns or secondhand Steinways. What's between them? Passport to heaven. You can't marry that guy. George? I'm going to. Come around about noon tomorrow. I mean today. Snob. Say, so what do you mean, snob? You're the worst kind there is, an intellectual snob. You made up your mind awfully young, it seems to me. Well, 30's about time to make up your mind. The time to make up your mind about people is never. <laughs> You're just a... Mass of prejudices, aren't you? You're so much thought and so little feeling, Professor. 
Your intolerance infuriates me. I should think that of all people, a writer would need tolerance. The fact is, you'll never, you can't be a first-rate writer or a first-rate human being until you've learned to have some small regard for human fr... Aren't the geraniums pretty, Professor? I need a drink. Yes, Mr. Sims. There's only two syllables in this whole wide world worth hearing. Women. Above all things. 